Welcome to tonight's Let's Paint Live. I'm Kirsten and I work here in the content studio at Plaid. And tonight we are going to teach you how to paint a painting in about an hour. And today we're kind of kicking off a little bit the end of summer, the weather's a little bit cooler, and we are super excited about fall. So tonight's painting is a little bit different. We are not working on a canvas, as you can see. We're working on this beautiful, already stained, vintage palette board and if you guys have one that is maybe a natural color or you've already base coated it a color just know that we're going to be learning so many great techniques um, we are going to be learning a little bit of blending a little bit of shading applying your pattern but we are working on this palette board so the first thing i want to do is show you guys what supplies that you are going to need for tonight's class so we are using the let's paint live kit and in that kit let me show you the specific colors that we are using so we are going to use folk art matte acrylic and we are using pure orange we are using daffodil yellow always wicker white and then we have two different greens for tonight's class we have classic green and then we have thicket which is a really beautiful dark hunter green and then we have got coffee bean and then we have got navy all these beautiful bottles this is the introduction to our new labels which is a beautiful new look that you guys are probably seeing coming in and out at the stores okay we are also tonight using our let's paint live brush set which are 10 different beautiful brushes. And what we're gonna focus on are the bigger brushes in that set. We're gonna be using the three quarter flat, a lot of the 12 and the 10 flat. And we're gonna also use the scruffy brush a little bit. And there's a large and a small in the kit. So really I'm just gonna teach you the techniques of using this, this brush um, and use whichever one is best for you guys. So you're gonna need a palette, whether you use a paper plate or palette paper water to clean your brushes, paper towels, and then always have a pencil is best, but I'm gonna use a piece of chalk. So use whatever you're most comfortable with. I love to transfer a very, very simple pattern. I want you guys not to do color book painting and follow a pattern exactly. I just wanna teach you some techniques to applying a simple pattern so that painting is the focus. Okay, so with that, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we are gonna do is apply our pattern. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this pretty close so you guys just have this tonight as a reference. So using chalk so that you guys can see it better, what we're gonna do is almost break this entire pattern into different basic shapes. Like the flower would be a circle, the vase would just be almost like an oval or a long rectangle just a simple line to create the floor. So using the chalk, again, so you guys can see it, first thing I'm gonna do is just lightly draw what would be the table that this vase is sitting on. I wanna make sure you guys can see that. And then I'm gonna draw the vase. Now you guys be creative and have fun with it. If you want your vase to be straight lines and more modern, draw your pattern that way. If you want it to be almost like a fishbowl vase and a perfect circle, draw your pattern that way. But knowing that it's going to overlap my table, I'm just going to kind of sketch the bottom. Going to do the sides. And know that your, your pattern is more of, a, more of a reference than it is something that you're going to follow exactly. So I'm just really lightly sketching. So there's my vase. Now what I'm gonna do up here where my flowers are is I'm not gonna be exact. I'm not gonna draw each little stem. I'm not gonna draw the details in each leaf. I'm actually not gonna draw these little orange groups of wild flowers at all. All I'm gonna do for my pattern is I'm gonna place the large areas where the sunflowers go. So over here on the side, I'm just gonna do a really loose circle. That's representing the brown center and then I'm gonna go up a little bit so it's not in a perfect line. And I'm gonna do another center. And if you want to represent the petals, what I would suggest is I wouldn't draw each petal like that because again, we're gonna cover that with paint and layering colors. So you could almost do just a really loose representation of where those petals will be. 
And then over here, this little sunflower that's to the side, it's just going to be a long oval. And then again, if you want to represent where those flower petals are going to go, just create a larger oval. So then what I'm going to do is just a few basic leaves. Again, I'm not going to do every leaf because I want you guys to have fun by doing that with the paint, but just a few basics, maybe the biggest ones. There's two leaves right here. Then over here, you can see coming off of this flower, again, are two very large sunflower leaves. There's some loose green areas in there, but I'm not going to draw that because we're going to just fill that in with color. You can see there's a large leaf right here. I'm just going to place that there just to represent the area. I'm going to leave that totally open. Our stems will be so easy to do at the very end. Then I'm just going to do two little areas that represent the leaves on this side of the canvas. Again, I'm leaving any kind of pattern for those cute little wildflower areas off for now. Okay, so let me see. Can you guys see that? Maybe if I move it a little bit closer. But you can see what I want you guys to do is have more fun painting the techniques and blending and shading than I want you to color exactly following a pattern. Okay, so now what we're going to do, now that you've got your pattern applied, we are going to load our palette. And what we are going to do first is we are going to work on the sunflowers. So we are going to load daffodil yellow onto our palette. Always a little bit of wicker white. And we're going to be mixing a little bit tonight. So I want you guys to have a little bit of coffee bean. And then just a touch of pure orange. Okay, and then I am first going to use the number 12 flat brush. And what we're going to do is we are going to load the yellow into our brush. Not too much paint, but fully loaded. The main reason why we're going to have a little more paint in our brush than we would if we were working on a canvas is because this wood will absorb that paint really quickly. And all I'm going to do is basic strokes to get the first layer of petals around my sunflower. So what I'm going to do is start on my chisel edge, which is the flat part of the end of the brush, and I'm just going to pull down, pull to the left, and then pull to the right, creating that petal. Starting on my chisel edge and just pull towards the center of your flower a really loose comma stroke, starting on that chisel edge and just pulling to the center. And know that each petal should be totally different. All you're doing is layering petals, starting on the chisel edge and then just doing a really basic comma stroke. Now you'll see, just because our palette board has that little groove in it, all I'm going to do in there is make sure that I connect those two colors just by pouncing yellow so that that area is filled in. I'm not lining them up exactly. You want them all to be a little bit different, but the same stroke. Chisel edge, comma stroke towards the center, same stroke on the other side. Not the same. You want it to be really organic. I'm going to jump up to this other sunflower. Same exact stroke. Comma stroke on the left, comma stroke on the right. Filling in the center. And see how the pattern, I'm not necessarily starting exactly on the line. Just using that almost as reference. If some areas, the paint, doesn't cover completely because you've got that beautiful texture in the wood, that is actually a look that would make this painting that much more feel like fall, kind of have that beautiful farmhouse rustic feel. See, I'm leaving a little bit of space 
in between some of these strokes. That way when we layer a darker yellow next, you'll see that you get all of that dimension that we've built up in that sunflower. Right there, just because again, it's on that separation of the palette wood. Just make sure you fill those little areas in so there's no break in your petals. Now I'm going to go over to this little flower that's kind of facing out and you only see the side angle. I'm going to do those same strokes on the top. And then the same stroke, but a little bit shorter for what's underneath the center of the sunflower. So still on that chisel, but just a much smaller stroke. Still on that chisel, comma stroke towards the center on both sides. Maybe one more, maybe right there. Filling in where that palette would. Making sure my centers are filled in. All right, now what I'm gonna do with that same yellow that we've been using, I'm gonna get just a touch of that coffee bean. Just a little, because you can always add more but you can't take it out once you've added it. And I am just mixing a little bit darker, warmer yellow. And that's using the daffodil yellow and just the tiniest little bit of the coffee bean just to create a darker yellow. Loading that onto my brush And then I'm going to do this exact same stroke and make it a little bit darker. That exact stroke, starting on your chisel, a comma on one side and then a comma on the other. In some spots I'm overlapping, but then I'm also filling in the areas. little bit more of that coffee bean, coffee bean. And I'm going to add that darker yellow also to this top sunflower, starting on the chisel, filling in so you don't have a break where the palette board is. That's a perfect example. See where the texture in the wood kind of made that stroke look a little bit distressed? I love that, and that will just add to the dimension and the details of your sunflower. This really loose, organic style of painting, I don't want each of your petals to be the same, and I don't want each of your petals to be a solid base coat. So filling in those areas Mix the daffodil with a little bit of that coffee bean when you need more paint. Same stroke, chisel edge, but just a little bit shorter for this little sunflower. just layering them right on top of the others. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm not even gonna clean my brush in water. I'm just gonna kinda get off the excess on a paper towel. I'm gonna need a little bit more yellow on my palette. That's that same daffodil yellow. And I'm gonna get a little scoop of that and move that down. And I'm gonna mix just a little bit of the pure orange. You don't want too much because you don't want it to be really peach. You just want it 
to kind of blend a little bit, creating a different shade of that yellow. I'm going to get the tiniest bit of coffee bean. Remember, less is more. You can always add more to it. But all you're doing is, I'm showing you with just using this really limited palette, you're able to blend and get all of these beautiful colors with the Folk Art Matte Acrylics. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to continue to layer different shades of yellow. Same stroke, starting on the chisel and just creating all of those beautiful petals on these sunflowers. If you've got any areas where there isn't a petal, maybe right there. You wanna also see that texture, so you don't want your petals to be base coated perfectly you just want to see these colors naturally blend together by layering the different values of the same yellow. I'm going to do the same thing on this little one. Need a little bit more. Get just a touch of the orange and a, just a touch of the coffee bean. And have fun with mixing these colors. If you want a much lighter sunflower, you could add a touch of the wicker white. If you wanted it to stay really, really bright and less these autumn fall colors, you could use just more of the daffodil. But I love all of these shades for fall. These really warm autumn colors. And it's also giving our sunflowers so much character. All right, so I've got all of those petals. I'm gonna clean off that brush, not in water, but just on the paper towel. And I'm just gonna do a few, the same color we did in the beginning, just the daffodil yellow. Now that we've got all those different colors, you can see the daffodil yellow on top of some of these colors looks even a little bit different because of all the layering that we're doing. Maybe right there, but that same simple stroke. All right, so now I'm gonna clean that brush. Now that we're done with that, I'm gonna clean that in the water. And always remove most of the water out of your brush as much as you can on a dry paper towel. I'm gonna flip that over. And now we're gonna load our greens onto our palette. And we've got this beautiful classic green. And then we've got this beautiful thicket, which is a little bit darker. So I am gonna drop down to the number 10 flat brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the classic green. I'm gonna load that into my brush, just like we did with the yellow. And then, again, we've got that placement. So we've got confidence where we can start our leaves. So what I'm gonna do is just starting on the chisel and just kind of outlining my rough little sketched pattern. I'm gonna just outline, just in paint, where I'm gonna create these leaves. So once you have a very basic leaf, sh leaf shape, I'm gonna just extend the tip of that leaf just by using the chisel edge because a sunflower has a really pointy, a really large leaf. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. All we're doing right now is just outlining so we know exactly where we're gonna add all of our shading. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. And right here, I've got two. Again, whenever you're painting over one of these palette board 
the little cracks in the palette board, just make sure you add color into that area because you don't want there to be unpainted stripes in your painting. And then I'm going to do this last leaf over here. Okay, so now we've got the perfect placement for the majority of our leaves. You know, we're going to go back in and add a few little ones, a few areas of green, but these are the basic leaves for our sunflowers. Okay, so now that I've done that, using that same classic green, I am just going to color in with a very loose brush stroke maybe half of each little leaf that we cre have created. I love when the paint is a little bit removed from your brush and it allows some of that wood texture to come through. So don't base coat it perfect and don't outline it perfect because we have that texture in our sunflower. We want this to look and feel the same. So we're almost scrubbing color into that area. And there's no right or wrong. If you did the top or the bottom, and I did the opposite, that's okay. All we're doing is getting green onto each little leaf section. Then wiping off any excess on a paper towel, I'm going into that darker green same brush and I'm just going to scrub the darker green onto the other side of each sunflower leaf. Again, allowing that wood to show through. I love that. The texture makes it such a beautiful farmhouse look and feel. And each palette board is so different. All these beautiful knots and the character These are so fun to paint on. They come in so many different sizes and they just make the greatest signs. They make the greatest gifts. They're just a unique surface that you can learn all of these techniques and paint on. So that little area, I'm gonna fill that in again just so there's not a separation in my design. You're just scrubbing on the darker green. We're almost base coating each section. How the color comes together, if there's more of the darker green or more of the lighter green, that is all okay. We're really just getting a good base coat so we can add some fun shading and highlighting. Okay, so that's placement for those. We're not going to worry about this yet. We'll get to that in a minute. So now what I want you guys to do is, again, remove just the excess paint. No need to go into the water. And I'm going to scoot a little bit of that wicker white down here on my palette. So that is my classic green. This is a little bit of my wicker white. I'm going to get more of that classic green. A little bit of that wicker white. We're going to blend those together. And then what I want to do to get that really pretty almost dirty citrus color, is I just want you to get the tiniest bit of yellow, and we're gonna add that into that lighter green that we just made. And mixing colors, absolutely have fun with it. If you want a much brighter green, add a little bit more white. If you want more of a lime green, add a little bit more white and a little bit more yellow. One of the fun things about mixing colors is you get to mix it to the exact color that you love. So you can see it's just a little more citrus. Let me make sure that you guys can see that. I'm gonna scoop my palette up just a little. Yeah, you guys can see that. So just more of a citrus light green. So what we are gonna do is I want you guys on the chisel edge to divide your leaf. Not perfect, not an exact line, but I want you to divide just these two leaves. One of the great things about working with acrylic is it dries really fast. 
So we're going to divide just these two leaves. And then what we're going to do on the top of this one is almost just scrubbing it. We are going to add those beautiful highlights just to the top section of that leaf. Then we're going to do the same thing, just scrubbing color onto the bottom of that one. And then just because this color is so beautiful, I'm going to do a little leaf separate right here just to add a little bit of that beautiful color. It's that same stroke. I just started on the chisel and did a little comma stroke, but just to add that really pretty green right there. Then we're going to move down to this one. And again, I want you guys to divide the leaf in half. Not perfect. And then I want you to highlight just by scrubbing that color almost back and forth, allowing the underneath color to still show through, but just adding that highlight. We're going to go up here and do the same thing on this guy. We're going to divide him. And then we're going to add just a little bit of light on that side. On this one, we're going to divide him and do the same on the top. Not covering up our, our underneath completely because we want all of that dimension. Then on this one, we're going to divide him coming up towards the vase. And along that top, maybe where more light would hit. And the same down here. We're going to divide them with a really loose line and then just scrub on just enough color. I'm going to sneak up to this leaf, which I forgot to do. I'm going to divide him and then just do that a little bit on the top. And you can see these first two leaves that we did, that is almost dry. One, because we're working on this really matte wood surface. And two, because that's one of the greatest things about working with the Folk Art Acrylic is it allows you to layer and layer and layer um, because it dries really, really fast. Okay, so we've got a really good base coat for all of our flower and our leaf elements. So what I want to do next is you will see, and this is just a really basic technique. So see this glass, white, clear. You can see that the stems are represented inside the glass, inside the vase, but they're not exact, they're not specific. So all we're gonna do is that same brush loaded with the green that we mixed and now adding a little bit of classic green. All I want you guys to do is kind of scrub some green, a little bit of light, a little bit of the dark, scrub a little bit of that more down the center Envision where your flower stems would come if you put these in a, to a beautiful vase. All your stems are going to come towards the center. So you're just applying not a solid base coat at all, but just the representation of where these stems will be inside that vase. You can pick a little bit up of the dark green, but you don't want a solid base coat. You want some of that wood to show through. But you're just representing an area where those stems will be. All right. So now that we've got kind of a base coat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the smaller 1-4 scruffy brush. And these are fun. These brushes are really great for texture, um, for just really loose areas that you just want to create a really nice loose effect. So to load a scruffy brush, all you do is pounce it into the color. So I am just pouncing that almost like a sponge into the coffee bean. And all I'm going to do is pounce the center of each sunflower. I hope you guys, oh, you guys can see. So even though the palette that I'm working on is that beautiful stained brown color, you can still see that the brown on top of that gives you so much texture. Again, don't forget where the seam of the palette boards are. Make sure you add color in there so you don't have a line through your painting. Overlap a little bit. You don't want a perfect circle, but overlap a little bit where your petals were starting to form. 
And using the scruffy brush, the great thing about that is see how it allows you not to have a perfect edge. Because on a flower, this would not be a perfect circle. It would have all of that beautiful detail. And the scruffy brush allows you to get that so easily. So you're just applying that brown to the center of each. And a full circle, a full circle, again, very irregular. And then that is more like a little oval, because remember, we're seeing that little sunflower from the side. One tip when using the scruffy brush is I don't like to clean it with water until the very end. I think it works better when it's a really dry brush. So all I'm going to do with the scruffy brush is remove a lot of that brown and I'm going to set that on the side and I'm going to go back to my number 10 flat brush. And what we're going to do, all of our leaves that are base coated are now perfectly dry. All we're going to do is just add the final layer of detail. And what I'm going to do is on, we'll start on the dark edge, I'm picking up this dark thicket. We are just going to make a little irregular edge to each of our leaves. So to do that, I'm just going to go on that chisel edge and almost just create small comma strokes that kind of loosen up the edge of that leaf. I'm going to do that up here on this one. And do it right there. Instead of it being a straight edge, you're just adding small little C strokes, not exactly the same size, not on every section of each leaf, but just to change up so that they're not perfect, but they have that irregular edge. Right here, you can see on that side of this one, I'm going to do just a few C strokes and maybe a longer edge. All you're doing is adding just a little bit, bit of texture. You'll see on this one, I'm extending the little end of that and then just a few C strokes just to soften and make that leaf a little bit more organic. Sunflowers have such big, beautiful leaves. Then with very little paint, I'm gonna flip that paper towel over again, removing most of it, not in any water, but still using that thicket. I'm just gonna scrub a little bit of that dark green over the center where the dark and the light meet. I just want to break up any hard lines so we have a really loose feel to our entire painting. Like that line is a little bit harder than I want it, so I'm just going to go in and just scrub some color of that darker green right over that. So then I'm going to clean that on the paper towel and I'm going to go back into that green that we mixed a little bit earlier. Which if you need to mix more, it's the classic green, a touch of wicker white, and then the littlest bit of yellow. Not too much paint. And I'm going to do the same thing to the lighter edges. I'm just going to make them a little bit more organic and scrub a little bit of color to blend that a little bit more. Let the wood show through because on this farmhouse palette board that really makes your painting that much more beautiful. I'm going to go up here and do that a little bit on this one. But you can see we're not following an exact pattern. We're just adding color on top of color. No strong lines and just allowing the colors to work really well together. I'm 
almost like dry brush painting. You can see where all that texture in the wood, because I have very little paint and no water on my brush, that you get all of that detail from where the brush drags across the textured wood. Okay, so make sure that you've got some different areas blended, shaded, just by scrubbing color onto those areas. So now I'm gonna get my number 12 flat brush, same one that we use for our petals, and just now, because everything is dry, I'm gonna get a little bit of that daffodil yellow right out of the bottle, a touch of the coffee bean. We're just remixing that color that we mixed at the very beginning. I'm gonna do just a touch of wicker white, just to lighten up that yellow just a little. So not too much on your brush. And I'm just gonna do a few strokes. We've got a beautiful base coat, but I want a few of my petals to kind of overlap the brown centers. So very random, same stroke starting on the chisel. We're just gonna overlap so a few of our petals are over that little brown center. Do the same thing up here. And just a few, but you can see just one or two petals in another color of yellow just adds to the really soft organic feel of these sunflowers. Okay, I go through a lot of paper towels. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, I'm going back to a smaller flat brush. So this is a number six flat brush. And all we're gonna do now is establish these areas that are mostly green, but that are kind of filling in our little bouquet. So I'm going in the darker green, which is the thicket. And all I'm gonna do is envision this little this little flower, his stem is gonna come down towards the center, but I'm not gonna brush over this. I'm only gonna go to the top of my vase. So I'm just gonna drag where that stem would go into my vase. This one right here, I don't want him to be straight up and down, so I'm gonna kind of let him curve just a little bit, but he's coming into the vase all in the center, and then this little guy is just gonna kinda of come over that way. All we're doing is really just creating a starting point for our stems. So this little flower, we're gonna start on the little guy on the left. He's got where the stem meets the flower because we're seeing him from the side. So loading again, that thicket, that darker green, we're gonna do those same little strokes that we did for our flower petals, starting on the chisel and two little comma strokes. One on the left, one on the right, and then filling that in the middle. Starting on the chisel, little comma stroke, another one on the top, and then filling in that center. My hand was probably over that. Let's see if I can do it this, nope, my hand's over it again. Uh, let's see, I can do it right here. So you're, well, I'm gonna do it right here so you guys can see it. You're starting on your chisel, and just a comma stroke towards your flower, and then another comma stroke towards your flower, and then you're just making sure that's filled in. So that's the base of that flower. And then these bigger ones, you just don't want all that open space in your bouquet. So I'm gonna make each stem a little bit thicker where it would come out of the flower, but you also wanna break it up a little bit so it's not exactly lines coming in. You're representing your stem, but then you're just loosely painting green into that center area of your flowers. Not covering up the brown stained wood completely, but breaking up a little bit of that area with green. Using that same brush, I'm gonna go into the classic green. And for these little leaves that are the base of this sunflower, I'm gonna do a comma stroke just on one of the sides 
I just want you guys to see how we're just adding a little bit of the highlight, a little bit of shadow, but just by working those two colors in there. I'm going to do the same thing with my stem. This is just that classic green. I'm going right over the darker green, the thicket. And then just in a few areas, I'm going to just scrub a little bit of that green. Leaving a lot of wood, not having exactly straight lines that represent the stem, but just filling in that area between your beautiful flowers. Now up here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to connect those leaves, but I just want a little bit of green combining those areas. So that was a little bit of the lighter green, which is the classic. Now a little bit of the thicket and doing the same thing. I'm going to do a little bit of classic up here. Just filling in, almost creating a background for my main flowers by scrubbing a little extra green around the leaves where the leaves and the flowers meet. Maybe a little bit right here, going into that thicket, and just adding a little bit. Right here, I'm going to go into that classic green and really just add a little bit of green where the vase and the beautiful bouquet meets. Okay, so now what we're going to do, you've got that little scruffy brush that we use to apply the brown. I didn't add any water. I just cleaned out the brown on my palette. I'm going to go back into that brown. Add some coffee bean if you need more on your palette. Loading the coffee bean into that little scruffy. And then I'm going to get just a touch of wicker white and load that into there. So just to create the details in the center of each of our sunflowers, I'm going to do that same technique. But I'm not going to pounce that whole area. I'm just going to do a half circle, kind of to represent where the sun or the light would hit that little flower. I'm going to do the same thing up here, just on the bottom, just a little half circle, a little bit more white. You're not pressing down too hard, but you're just allowing this brush to do all the work and create that texture. I need a little bit more of the coffee bean and just a touch of the wicker white. I hope you guys can see that. So I didn't make a lighter brown. I allowed the darker brown and the white to be separate on that scruffy brush because you're not creating a light brown. You want both colors because that's what gives you all of that fine detail. See how you've got white and brown when you apply it that way? I'm going to go back and do a little bit of brown just to break that up. And then I'm going to clean that scruffy brush on my paper towel. And what I want you guys to do is just dip into the wicker white. Don't over pounce it and overload it, but then just a few areas. See how you get that beautiful spots of color? I would never know how to add that with just a basic paintbrush. This allows it to be so organic, but just a few little areas in the center of your sunflowers. All right. So now we're done with our scruffy brush. And after you're totally done with it, definitely clean it in water. I just don't like it to be super wet when we're using it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is these cute little areas. You can see this little grouping of wildflowers in that beautiful orange color. So what I want to do to that is I am going to get this little liner brush, which this is a number, let's see, this is the number two liner brush. I'm going to get a little bit more classic green on my palette. And all I'm going to do, because remember, we did not make a pattern for this. We just, and if you guys want to skip this, or maybe you want them to be a different color, a little bit of blue, maybe a little violet, or you don't want them at all, this is just a little bonus, a way to make your fall floral that much more beautiful. So I know I'm going to have a little bit here, a little bit here, and a little bit here. Odd numbers are always best. So all I'm going to do with the classic green on my number two liner brush is I am just going to draw a very simple line to represent where these are going to be. I'm going to do the same thing up here. I want this guy kind of coming up to the right. I'm just going to do a line to represent where that little grouping of 
orange wildflowers will be. And this little group, I'm going to have kind of go out to the left. But just all that's doing is giving me confidence on where I'm going to place those flowers. So what we're going to do is using our larger scruffy brush now, no water, make sure it's perfectly dry. I am going to pounce that into the classic green. But what I want you guys to do is remove a lot of that paint off of that brush. And then just lightly, not in a perfect cone, not in a perfect circle, just apply the softest amount of color to that area. You can see where so much wood is coming through. You're not getting almost any of that a solid green. Load a little bit more classic green, but remove a lot of it. I'm going to come down to this little side and just very irregular. Not a line, not a cone, not a circle, but almost moving left to right and up and down. Very irregular section of just that classic green with a lot of that natural wood coming through. I'm going to come up to this one. You can see this one may be the best. I'm just going to pounce. Very little paint. Remember, less is more because you can always go back and add. But working on these beautiful palette signs, you can't remove or rebase coat because you want that natural wood as your background. But you can see I'm just allowing just a little bit of green going back and forth and jumping all around to create the base coat for our wildflowers. Can you guys see that? Okay, same scruffy brush. Cleaning that, let me get another paper towel. Cleaning that on a paper towel. Go into this green that you mixed. So it's your lighter shade of green. If you need to mix that again, it's the classic green, a touch of wicker white, and then I was using just a little bit of that daffodil yellow, a little bit of the wicker white. So just mix a lighter shade of green. Same scruffy brush, no water, pounce, and then remove a lot of it. And then you're just going to do that same technique even less pressure to that area. Okay, so that just gives you the base coat area for those little groupings of wildflowers. So now I'm going to get my number 10 flat brush and using that pumpkin orange, that I'm sorry, pure orange that we used a little bit to make some of our different yellow shades. If you want it to be that bright, vivid orange for fall, if you want it to be a little bit darker, I'm going to add just a touch of that coffee bean. Maybe if your home decor palette is more of a lighter pastel orange, you could add just a touch of wicker white. I'm going to add just a little bit more coffee bean because I love that rusty orange. So I'm just blending that on my number 10 flat brush. And then all I'm going to do is using my chisel edge, almost, let me do it on the palette. I'm just using my chisel edge and doing two strokes, one going in one direction and one going on the other, just like a flat brush stroke, back and forth. You don't want to square. You don't want a rectangle. You just want to overstroke two flat strokes, just creating a spot of color. So I'm going to do that in several areas right over the top of those little green areas. You're not following any pattern. You're just getting that really organic feel of wildflowers. Adding a little bit more coffee bean because I like that rusty orange. But just really random. Don't cover up the green completely. Don't put them in a row. Just have them very loose and random over those areas that you've applied the green. A 
then what I'm going to do is I did my first one with that rusty orange. Now I'm going to go right into that pure orange. And I'm just going to overstroke that area again. Really nothing more than just applying color. Don't forget right there, that one is in an area where the palette board meets the other panel. So just make sure you apply some color inside there so you don't have a break in your pattern. You've still got the green showing, but then you've got those beautiful loose sections of orange. I'm gonna clean that brush and dip in just to the littlest bit of wicker white and create a lighter version of the orange I've been using. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna brush over a few areas of each of my little wildflower groupings. You can see just with three colors, you get all those beautiful shades. Get a little bit more. Little bit of the coffee bean. There we go. Okay, then I'm going to go back to that number 10 flat brush that we've been using for our green. And all I'm going to do is add a little bit of white to this lighter green that we mixed earlier. And using just the chisel, I'm just going to pounce that just very random just to create areas that represent a leaf. You can tell they're not they're not exact. There's not three on each section. You're just staying on your chisel, which is the flat end of your brush, and just pouncing a little bit more color around those little orange wildflowers. Using those same greens and a little bit more or less of wicker white, you get all of that shading which is just so beautiful. Okay. okay, then we're gonna get our littlest liner brush, which in the Let's Paint kit is a number one liner brush. Let's see, there it is. And all we're gonna do, I added a little bit of water. Let me pull that in so you guys can see it. Just a little bit of water into my brush. And then I'm putting that into that shade of yellow that we mixed. If you want it brighter, you can add a little bit of water to the yellow daffodil but I'm just doing it in this beautiful darker shade of yellow that we mix. Just the littlest bit of water. Rolling your brush in that paint so it's loaded really well. And all we're gonna do is do a few thin areas, almost like little lines staying on the tip of that brush. And that's just adding details to these little bushels of wildflowers. Not one per orange flower, not next to each green section. You want it to be really organic and really loose. Just a little bit more water so it moves better on this palette board but just adding just the littlest bit of texture. Just the color alone adds so much texture to that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, this is our largest brush in the set. This is a three quarter inch flat brush. Add some wicker white to your palette if you don't have a clean pile. And I'm just gonna load this large brush with the wicker white. Oh, I'm talking normal now. Sometimes when I'm painting all these little details, my voice slows down and I have no idea. It's kind of funny. So all I'm doing is where our vase is, I'm starting on the outside edge and I am just doing a large flat stroke on the left side of my little vase. Remember if your vase is more round, if it's more modern and straight up and down, whatever shape you want, all you're doing is really long dry brush strokes just with wicker white on the left side of your vase. Let me move that up a little bit to make sure that you guys can see it. 
loading that brush again. You don't want a perfect line. All of this is so loose and organic. You want to make sure that your vase stays with that same feel. What I'm going to do is jump over to this side. Not too much paint. You want that dry brush feel because you want that wood to show. You don't want it to be a solid white vase because then you'll lose all of that character by painting on this palette wood. Loading it with wicker white, just really long strokes, almost like we did with the leaves. You're just scrubbing color onto this side of your vase. Load more paint as you want it. Now I'm going to create the bottom of my vase. The very bottom, you could make a little bit more solid, but don't create a really strong line. But you're just scrubbing color on there. Got a little bit of overlap where my vase overlaps the seam in that palette. Got a little bit there, so I'm just going to add color, add white into that section. And I'm not outlining. I'm not perfectly outlining that leaf. I'm not perfectly outlining where the stems meet the sunflower. Just keeping it really loose. So you've defined the edge of your vase, and then we're going to define the very top going directly over this green because that green represents where our stems are inside the vase. I'm going to add just a little detail by doing that second line. Just pouncing color where those palette boards meet. Not covering up the green completely, but just almost a dry brush technique over that. And then what I'm going to do, not to have too much wicker white in my brush, but I'm going to pick up a little bit of water. I'm going to go in that water twice, and you can see I've just got a really thin consistency of that wicker white, almost like a wash. Not too much on my brush. Cleaning my brush, but not removing all of that wicker white, but just a really thin, watered-down consistency. And now I'm going to wash this section. You got to work kind of fast because this wood is so soft and so raw that the paint will absorb in there really quickly. But you can see by adding just a little bit of water, you still get that green coming through, but you get that look that there's still stems in the glass. So a little bit more water, almost cleaning out that brush of the solid acrylic and creating almost like a watercolor. I'm going to brush over that. I'm going to kind of connect where the dry brush white meets the watercolor white. Putting a little bit of that water down in those palette board grooves. That allows the representation of the leaf, of the stems, I'm sorry, inside your vase, but you still have all that beautiful texture. Okay, then we're going to use the navy. Let's see if I got a spot on my palette. And all we're going to do is create the little floor or the little tabletop where your beautiful fall bouquet will sit. I'm going to clean off that brush, remove most of the water, and I'm just going to go into that navy. I'm going to start with the line that we drew as a pattern. To create a line and then I'm just going to pull down scrubbing navy from the top to the bottom but still doing a really loose dry brush technique allowing that wood to show through not outlining your vase exactly but just washing that onto there and then I'm going to pick up some of the wicker white Blend that into the navy, not too much paint, and I'm going to dry brush that, just blending and shading and highlighting as you go. Go back into that navy, and 
And the key to this is just a really loose random stroke. You don't want to go up and down and create a pattern. You don't want to go back and forth and create a pattern. You just want your strokes to overlap really loose and organic. So you've got this really great farmhouse look on all the elements of your painting. Add a little bit more white if you like a lighter surface for your vase or keep it the really dark navy if you like that. But you're just layering the navy and the wicker white but still allowing a lot of that wood to show through. Okay, I think that is our beautiful cottage sunflowers. So you guys, I hope you had the greatest time painting. We would love for you guys to join our Let's, uh, Let's Paint Facebook page here at Plaid. We love to see everything that you guys paint. We would also, one of our favorite things is we love when you guys hashtag your paintings. Hashtag them at Plaid Crafts. And we do this every month, the first Thursday of every month, where we teach you to paint in about an hour. So I want to show you guys what next month's class is. So again, we don't always want to paint on canvases. We want to show you guys all the unique surfaces. So Jesse will be back next month doing this adorable pumpkin with this beautiful um, buffalo plaid pattern that is so super easy and just a great way to jump into fall. So this will be the first Thursday of October. I think that's October 7th. And again, join our plaid Let's Paint page and paint with us. Thanks everybody for joining us. Bye.